In the unseen corners of society, the struggles of the homeless are often ignored, while their humanity is disregarded. Many view homelessness through a lens of prejudice, assuming it is the result of laziness or poor decisions. This story follows a mother and her young daughter whose daily battle for survival brings them face to face with the worst and best of human nature. As they navigate the hostility of the streets, a chance encounter with a stranger brings their selflessness to the forefront and reveals the transformative power of kindness. Their actions spark a chain of events that not only changes their lives, but challenges the perceptions of those around them. The sky was streaked with the last hues of sunset as Laura and her daughter, Missy, walked through the alleyways, clutching their only possession, a bag filled with cans and bottles they had collected to recycle. The streets had become their world, the corners of the city, their home. Laura glanced down at Missy, who was tugging gently at her mother's hand, her voice soft but insistent. Mommy, I'm hungry, Missy murmured, looking up with wide, innocent eyes. Laura's heart ached. I know, sweetheart. We'll eat soon, I promise. She managed a weak smile, trying to sound optimistic for her daughter's sake. How about this? Let's find just a few more cans, and then we'll get those donuts you wanted. Chocolate with sprinkles, right? Missy's eyes brightened at the mention of donuts. Really, Mommy? We can get donuts? Of course, Laura replied, pointing to a nearby trash can. Let's check this one out. Who knows? We might hit the jackpot. Missy giggled and skipped ahead, but as they approached the trash can, a group of rowdy young men stumbled out of a nearby bar, their loud voices echoing down the street. Laura's body tensed as she instinctively pulled Missy closer, hoping to avoid their attention. Unfortunately, it was too late. Hey, look at this, one of the men called out, his voice dripping with malice. Digging through the trash like rats. How pathetic. Laura kept her head down, hoping they would lose interest but another man stepped forward, kicking over the bag of cans they had painstakingly collected. Oops, he sneered. Looks like I made a mess, but you're already dirty, so what's the harm? Laura knelt to gather the cans, her hands shaking as Missy clung to her side. Please, Laura whispered, her voice trembling. We're not bothering anyone, just leave us alone. Why don't you get a job instead of scavenging like vermin? Another man jeered crossing his arms with a smug expression. Homeless people are all the same, lazy, worthless, and always begging for handouts. Missy, unable to contain her fear and anger, shouted back, don't talk to my mommy like that. The men erupted into laughter. Look at this little fighter. What's the matter, kid? Can't your mom handle herself? Laura hugged her daughter tightly, shielding her from their taunts. Please, she repeated, her voice barely above a whisper. We're just trying to survive. Eventually, the men grew bored and staggered away, their mocking laughter fading into the night. Laura knelt beside Missy, trying to hold back her tears. We're human beings, she murmured, wiping a tear from her daughter's cheek. They shouldn't treat us like this. Missy sniffled, her small voice filled with confusion. Mommy, why don't they like us? We're nice people. Laura sighed her heart heavy with the burden of explaining a world so full of judgment. People don't always understand, honey. They see our clothes, our situation, and they think it means we're bad. But they don't know us. We are good people, and that's what matters. Missy nodded, though her eyes still shone with unshed tears. I don't like them. I know, sweetie, Laura said softly, but we have to keep going. Let's get some rest now, okay? The night crept in and the city's streets became eerily quiet. Laura and Missy returned to the small, worn-out tent they called home, hidden in a forgotten corner of the alley. As Missy curled up under a thin blanket, her stomach grumbled loudly. Laura could do nothing but stroke her daughter's hair, hoping tomorrow would bring some relief. Suddenly, the sound of shouting and scuffling outside their tent shattered the silence. Missy sat up, alarmed. Mommy, what's happening? she whispered, clutching the blanket tightly. Laura peeked out of the tent and saw two men harassing an older man in a wheelchair. The same men who had taunted her earlier were now kicking the man's chair, knocking over the cans he had collected. Please stop. I need those cans, the older man pleaded, his voice desperate. Laura's pulse quickened. She knew the danger of getting involved, 
but her heart told her she couldn't stand by and watch. Missy grabbed her mother's hand. Mommy, we have to help him. Laura hesitated for a moment, torn between her fear for Missy's safety and the overwhelming need to help the man. Taking a deep breath, she leaned down and whispered, stay in the tent, no matter what, I'll be right back. Laura stepped out into the cold night air, her hands trembling but her resolve firm. Leave him alone, she shouted. The men turned toward her, recognizing her instantly. Oh, it's you again. Didn't we teach you to mind your own business? Laura stood her ground. I won't let you hurt him. Leave or I'll call the police. One of the men scoffed, stepping forward. Lady, you're lucky we don't take you out right now. Laura's voice didn't waver. I'm not afraid of you. Now go before you regret it. The men exchanged glances, clearly weighing their options. With a final grunt of annoyance, they turned and walked away, muttering curses under their breath. As soon as they were out of sight, Laura rushed to the older man's side, helping him back into his chair. Are you okay? She asked, her voice gentle. Thanks to you, I am, the man replied, rubbing his arm where they had shoved him. I don't know what would have happened if you hadn't stepped in. Laura smiled faintly. No one should go through this. We've been where you are. Those men did the same to us earlier. The man looked at her, his eyes filled with gratitude. Why did you help me? You risk your own safety for a stranger, Laura shrugged. Because we have to help each other. It's the only way the world will ever get better. The man was silent for a moment, then reached into his coat pocket. I don't have much, but I want to give you something for what you did. He handed her a piece of paper, and when Laura unfolded it, her eyes widened in disbelief. It was a check for $10,000. I, I can't take this, Laura stammered, her voice shaky. This is too much. The man smiled kindly. You deserve it. You stood up for me when no one else would. It's not just about the money. It's about your courage and kindness. Missy peeked out of the tent, her eyes wide with wonder. Mommy, what is it? Laura knelt down, holding the check tightly. It's a gift, honey. Someone helped us when we least expected it. In a world that often overlooks the struggles of the less fortunate, this story is a powerful reminder of the humanity that connects us all. Laura's courageous decision to help a stranger, even when she had little herself, illustrates the enduring strength of empathy and kindness. Though the streets were cruel, her act of compassion sparked a chain of events that not only changed her life, but restored hope in those around her. We are often quick to judge others based on appearances, but beneath the surface, we all share the same desires for dignity, respect, and kindness. This story encourages us to be mindful of how we treat others, reminding us that a single act of generosity can have a profound and lasting impact. Ultimately, it is not wealth or status that defines a person's worth. It is the kindness they show to others.